medical subsidies will be revamped by mid-2022 to ensure that those who need financial help with their medical bills get a larger share of these government subsidies. Acute hospitals will base subsidies using per capita household income instead of an individual's income. The health ministry will also introduce one subsidy range from two for the B2 and C-class wards that will range from 50 to 80 percent. The change will mean higher subsidies for lower income patients who opt for B2 class and lower subsidies for higher income patients in C-class. And to make it easier for lower income patients to opt for private A or B1 class wards, the ministry will allow them to get subsidized follow-up treatment at specialist outpatient clinics. A national pharmacy will be set up to consolidate medication delivery across public health care institutions from 2022. The first phase will benefit all polyclinic patients taking chronic disease medications, followed by patients from public hospitals. When ready, the National Central Field Pharmacy will consolidate medications across multiple providers in a central location, enabling delivery of medications directly to patients' homes, secure post boxes, or other convenient locations. This will improve the access to pharmacy services, including for seniors with mobility needs, as Dr. Tang Wuming mentioned, and support new care models such as telemedicine. And over 56,000 public health care workers will get salary increases over the next two years, starting in July. Senior Minister of State for Health, Kopo Kun, said nurses will see pay bumps of 5 to 14 percent in their monthly base salaries, while other health care staff like pharmacists and admin staff will get increases of 3 to 7 percent. However, doctors and dentists will not be included as their salaries were last updated in 2019. COVID-19 has been a trying time for all our healthcare staff and volunteers. I know many staff in our, private, in our public healthcare institutions suspended their annual leave to meet the surge in manpower demands during the height of the COVID-19 crisis. Many have played a critical role in the battle against COVID-19. Now I'd like to express our heartfelt thanks to all of them for their dedication and their contributions and their families for supporting them through this very tough period. Our healthcare workforce is the lifeblood of our healthcare system. And the work they do is critical in protecting the health and safety of our society. We must maintain the salary competitiveness of healthcare staff against the overall market to attract and retain quality talent.